Jax Richardson here and welcome to the second part of episode 2 of the Almost Art original series, Interpretation. This segment features an artist most prominently known as Nomad's Land, an artist who has led one of the most varied careers in the arts of anyone I've ever met, working as a painter, sculptor, director, screenwriter, actor, presenter, voiceover artist and even a puppeteer. If you want to see more of Nomad's Land's work, please check out the links below. It's me. I know it's late and you're probably sleeping, but I just needed to get out of my head a little bit. There's only so much talking I can do to myself before I start to feel weird and reject my own company, and to be honest, I'm not sure exactly how guilty I should have feel about maybe waking you up, as how do I know really that you're actually feeling anything in response? I've been toying with this idea for a while now that, just like a game, I'm in control of me and everyone else is just a bot, <laughs> programmed to react to me. The only consciousness I can ever guarantee is my own. How do I know that you're actually in there? Any reaction you give could just be some pre-programmed response to a trigger. Though, now that I say it out loud, maybe that's what a person actually is. Even if you are really in there, if I say a certain thing, you'll just elicit a certain response. We all think that we're in control, but the truth is we have no control over how we feel, our opinions, our tastes. Maybe we're all just pre-programmed. Everything I experience and feel can probably come down to some kind of chemical reaction. What does that actually say of me being me? Load me up with chemicals and I could be someone else in less than an hour. Change the weather, time of day and how much I've slept and again, I could be a completely different guy. I caught the last five minutes of some science show earlier, and I think that's what got my mind racing. Some old guy with head was inexcusable for someone who knew they were going to be filming for television. They alluded to the idea that there's an infinite number of universes or realities, and in each one, every possible outcome, every single alternate happens. In this universe, I'm calling you, and you're probably annoyed, and next, you're surprised. According to his theory, you're probably aroused by this call, and in many of them in varying degrees. If that is the case... Does that mean heaven, if there is one, will be filled with an infinite amount of versions of me that will vary ever so slightly? Or will there be an infinite amount of different heavens suitable for each variant? If there are an infinite number of universes where everything is ultimately possible across all of them, does that mean that some of them must feature technology that makes it possible to travel across universes? Does that mean that in those realities, ultimately nothing is of consequence? You kill someone in your universe, travel to the next one where you didn't kill someone, does that mean it happened or it didn't? I know that a lot of what I'm saying probably doesn't make much sense to you. Truth is, none of this makes much sense to me either. I'm working so hard to please many people, and I keep wondering why. I have no idea of our place in the grand scheme of things, what any of this actually means. I talk about legacy and leaving things behind and being remembered, but even if I manage to be remembered for the next five or six generations, even in the timeline of the universe we currently have, I'd probably still be unbelievably insignificant. People spend their life searching for meaning. Some find it in religion, some in science. Some seem to be able to make peace with the idea that they won't ever be able to truly understand, and the lucky ones? The really lucky ones haven't even considered it. They just live. Whether you're really there, or just a bot programmed to react to me, I am grateful that I have you to call. The first thing that I always ask is, what was the your initial reaction when you very first heard the The initial reaction? Um... I guess two images popped to mind. One was robots, and one was uh, multiverse. And I guess the third one was religion. Mm -hmm. So I tried to incorporate that into the painting. And I noticed that throughout the hour, you only actually listened to the mo listened all the way through, actually only twice. Mm. Like once at the start and once again halfway. Yeah. Does that mean that when you first heard it, that sort of pushed you in a direction? Yeah. And then you. Did you ever feel any sort of sense of responsibility to stay true to the whole thing, or did you just pick a key aspect of it? Um, I had an image about halfway through what I heard, um, and then the the second half of the of the dialogue, uh, the text, it's kind of stayed true to my initial image anyway. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't really need to list it again for the second time. I just the second time was just to make sure that I was on the right track, mm. basically. Yeah. And was this the vision that you had, or yeah. did this develop organically? No, it was pretty much, well, like, the idea was pretty much what you see. Um, I think at the end I wasn't sure if it was going to be a, a hand that comes out or a face. Um, and with this bit, I wanted it to be more tentacle-like, mm -hmm. but I kind of like how it evolved into, like, this bionic city. Mm. Could you talk us through the different elements of what's happening here? 
Um, well, a lot of my work I, I do with uh, landscapes mm -hmm. and um, skylines. So that's always a basis I was going to fall back on, just with like the time that we were given. Mm -hmm. And um, I want it to be otherworldly. And um, otherworldly to the fact that it doesn't really represent something on Earth, but it's familiar. Yeah. And um, which allows you to create experimental images like this bionic city, in mm -hmm. a way. And, um, and a door in the sky. You know. So you can picture this actually being taking taking place on some distant planet or something. And are you hoping that those looking at it will take from it the story that you had in your head, or are you happy for people to interpret in, in their own way? I think it's open to interpretation. Um, but I also kind of feel that the point's pretty clear. It's pretty clear. So you've kind of got like the matrixy sort of you tapped into this system, mm -hmm. right? It's a system, so that's why you've got kind of like the blue lights that are going on. Um, you're not sure what's real anymore because you're just so trapped in this working mechanical society where we're being told from day one what you're supposed to be doing with your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, while at the same time you're being trying to rise yourself to another plane of happiness, I guess. I was going to say existence, but really it's it's happiness and the lack of having fear in your life. Mm. And the primary fear I felt from what I heard and what I feel in most societies is the fear of death. And that's where religion comes in. And um, multiverses as well, you know, you, you die in one universe, you might still be living happily in another universe, who knows, or being immortal in another universe. Um, so with this, with him being this character that's been risen up and being fed everything through these tubes. It's, uh, he's encountering this hand, let's say the hand of God from heaven. So you've got the white space in the background. And he's just kind of giving like the, the gun finger. Bang, bang. <laughs> yeah. You know? Is it's like you're looking for a state of happiness. It's, uh, you're not going to find it here, sucker. What? That's, that's quite dark. <laughs> is it dark? Yeah. Is, is there anything that, um, obviously we did have a time restraint today. Yeah. If that wasn't there, what would you have done differently? Uh, I'd probably do multiple of them. Um, so I'd have multiple figures doing the same thing mm -hmm. uh, in different hands, just maybe giving similar sort of expressions, like the, the gun finger or a palm, a restriction. You know, so like, nothing welcoming. It's no, definitely. yeah, it's all it's all disregarding. You know, you're not you're not important in this heavenly place because this heavenly place doesn't exist. Uh, we were talking earlier about how you've collaborated with musicians and poets before. Yes, Could you tell us a bit about that. What, what that involved? Yeah, I guess that was just a stepping stone towards where I am now as a filmmaker. Because um, with filmmaking, I get to work with composers and musicians and and writers as well, so I get to collaborate with them on, on that level. But before, when I was just a visual artist, I would collaborate with musicians, which would score the artwork, mm -hmm. you know? It would just bring that, the world that I was creating to um, a bigger place, I guess, we could say. Yeah. With more elements of artwork than I guess the art becomes clearer mm. to the audience. Or there's more to digest, or there's more to think about. Okay. Yeah. And where's going to be the, your next sort of project? That you're going to do? Um, my next project, so I've just finished working on my first short film, mm. and that's doing its festival circuit right now. Um, but what it's part called? of, it's called Sick to My Bones. Okay. Uh, it's an allegory that's set billions of years in the future, yeah. where um, humans have split into two factions, and they're trying to fight for the planet again, so it's all about what is good and evil? What are the actual concepts behind good and evil? Do they actually exist? Is it real or not? Or is it just a state of mind? Um, so that's part one of a, of a short film trilogy. So I'm working on part two and part three right now. And part two will be set in a city and it'll be about, about 
about basically this, you know, actually, the second film. So it's, a, it's about a guy who's trapped in this mechanical society with um, everyone doing the rat race every day, and he's trapped where he's so aware that we're part of this huge universe where there are billions of other civilizations possibly out there, and everyone's just so focused on making the next paycheck. So it deals with those kind of concepts. Well, thank you so much for coming down and taking part. It was really lovely to meet you. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. That was Nomad's Land. What an interesting guy. I love how much backstory features in his visual pieces. Be sure to check out more of his work by checking out the links below. Also, don't forget to check out the others who participated in today's experiment, and also make sure to have a look at last month's experiment, just in case you missed it.